Hello everybody, welcome to my guide here on weights for stable diffusion and negative prompts which a lot of people have been asking about and have become really popular. So I'm going to show you how to do them. These might be, if you're used to using uh, the negative prompts like on some of those uh, online apps like Night Cafe, I use Night Cafe a lot, it has some built in you can use, things like that. This will be a little different, I, I think it still is kind of implemented the same on there, I'm not sure, you know, I don't see what they're exactly using. but let me first show you, I'm just using a standard runtime here, standard, standard, and that's usually how I run, especially on the tutorials. And I'm just running the 1.5 model and the V1 inference, and I have animation mode set to none. And then we're going to get right into the tutorial here, the guide. So let me show you first. First, what I'm going to do is go over weights, because... Um, It'll help a lot to understand weights, to use the negative prompts here. And also, just weights in themselves, using this can also have a lot, you can do a lot of the same things that you want to do with the negative prompts with weights as well. You can really use weights um, for a lot of ways. The best way they're used, that I've always thought, actually, even before you know the negative prompts came out, I used them a lot just to kind of fine-tune my prompt. And you can make one part of the prompt have more more weight than another which will basically mean it'll render that part of the prompt a little more which I'll demonstrate here and the syntax has changed a bit from before there's no commas you just put the colon and the number so I am doing a complete new guide for the deform 0.7 notebook and up just to get kind of all the tutorials up to date and everything and aside from that this is just a brilliant notebook you know it's a really good notebook and I really love it I anticipate this is going to be you know viable for quite some time here so the first thing I'm doing, if you notice, I have a set seed. So anytime you are doing something that you're experimenting on or trying to fix, always put, put a seed in there when you're learning how to do something, just so that you can see the, the effect it's having on the image directly. If you have a random seed, each image you make is going to be different anyway, so you won't be able to detect um, what the changes you made actually did quite as easily. So I'm putting a fixed seed in there, and I'm just going to put a patch in here. Weights, negative prompts, okay, and I'm just using the um, DPMPP sampler, uh, 40 steps, scale 7, nothing too fancy here. So for my first prompt here, oh, let me show you one more thing. On our prompt weights here, I do have this checked. This way, this will show us exactly what our weights are doing. So this is a good thing if you're still learning to use the weights with this notebook. Go ahead and check this on. This will show you exactly what your weights are doing. So right now, with each one of these parts of the prompt, set to one each section is going to get 33 percent of the total prompt which would be kind of just like writing the prompt as is without the weights but i'm doing this to show you how they work so we could have a two in here also for each of these numbers instead of the one it would be the exact same thing so the numbers by themselves do not mean anything in the weights they only mean something in relation to each other and let me go ahead and demonstrate that we'll just go ahead and run it here so we're going to get some kind of a mishmash of an object because we've got a red square, a blue circle, and a yellow triangle, each with a weight of 1. And you can see here, so it's given each part of the prompt 33% of the total weight. Okay, and there we go. We've got kind of that just a mishmash there of all those. So let me show you, if we turn these up to 8, it's still going to be the exact same thing. We should still get a similar image. The exact same image since I'm using a seed. So we can turn these all up to 8. It's going to be the exact same thing. And we can see that right there. You see it's still 33%, 33%, 33%. So again, the numbers by themselves do not mean a thing. They just mean something in relation to each other. So let's go ahead and demonstrate that now. So this time I'm going to give the red square a 2, the blue circle a 1, and the yellow triangle a 1. And actually, just to be a little more dramatic, no, I'll keep it like that. So the red square is now going to get 50% of the total weight, so it should be predominant here. It is the alpha shape and color for this run. And if you notice, the red square is getting 50% of the token. So we've got more red squares and less yellow and blue. And I'm just going to demonstrate that again here. We'll just go down the row here. So this is how the weights work. So again, you can use this also just to kind of section out your prompt and that might solve the issue you're having there maybe but the negative prompts also were good we'll get to that after this I'm just kind of doing this to demonstrate how you can use weights because weights are a really useful tool they're really good for fine-tuning your model and you see now we've got more blue circles 
And let's go ahead and go to the final one. We'll put the yellow triangle up to two this time. So if you notice, we're getting different images with the exact same prompt. The only thing that we're changing is that weight value in the prompt. Everything else is remaining exactly the same. So there's so many different ways to fine tune your images with this notebook. That's why I've always loved it. That's why I've always liked this above and beyond everything else, just because of all the massive amounts of micromanagement we have here. And there is our yellow triangle. So you notice that one was not really, it kind of is maybe one of the weaker parts of the prompt. So everything, everything you do affects your image. It can be the prompt itself that's affecting it. It can be the, the scale. See, there's so much to learn here. So that's why I do these tutorials just one thing at a time. And then when you throw them all together, you can create anything. So we're going to crank that up to four there. And there we've got more of our triangle and our pyramid. So that is how the weights work. Okay, and let's go ahead now and get to the negative prompts. I just wanted you to kind of have a good understanding of how the weights work because that can be very useful to you as well. And you also will need to understand them if you're using for the negative prompts or you can just you can just make your prompt like normal and then tag your negative prompt at the end of it. Okay, so we're now going to get into the negative prompts and I've just got kind of something a little bit general here. I kind of want to have something that can give us a lot of items for us to remove and kind of show you how to use them and also some of the limitations of negative prompts. Okay, and actually this first one will work if we don't get any other better ones. We'll, we'll just let it run a couple of them here. Yeah, let's just go ahead, let's just go ahead and stick with this one. This one will do what we want here. So I'm just gonna copy the seed here. And let's just confirm that's the same image. So especially if you have like a really long prompt, you don't want to you don't want to um, probably use the weights in every single part of it. You just want maybe a particular something out of that prompt. And there we go. So that's the other thing too is you might have um, you might have more than one thing in your prompt like like say i had a sci-fi laboratory with tables and other things so it might be that it's making these tables not just from the tables but also from the laboratory so that might be sometimes why your negative prompts don't work but the very first thing we'll do here is let's just get rid of the people we just wanted a sci-fi laboratory we didn't ask you ai for any people we just wanted an empty laboratory for our scene here maybe you want an alien crawling out of a test tube or something so we're going to go ahead and do that so I've just got a sci-fi laboratory and then people minus one. And this should get rid of the people in. And it should just give us an empty laboratory with nobody inside of it. And there you can see our negative weight is negative one. This is the rest of our prompt. One. And again, it's always a percentage when you're using weight. So there we go. So there's a laboratory empty of people. But it also has lights and tables. We didn't ask for those either. Maybe it was, maybe everyone left. We didn't want lights. So I'm also going to do this to show you. And also the reason why I wanted you to learn the weights before we just start pumping in the negative prompts. Because now it's going to dilute the people minus one though also. So you don't want too many negative weights. Because if you notice down here the same way it divides up the positive weights with a percentage. It's now dividing the negative weights. So 50% negative people negative 50 or negative 5 on the lights, negative 5 on 0.5 on the people instead of that negative 1. And we do still got some lights up there in the panel, so that didn't work perfect. The people, it's still showing are absent. But let's just keep adding it, and we'll see if any of that stuff does start cropping back in. I do not know if it will. This is kind of an experiment for me, too. So we're going to put tables minus 1. And we're going to get down to the point where it's not even going to know what to throw in the laboratory there because we've taken everything out. But if you notice, each time we do that, it's diminishing that number. Now it's only negative 0.3, negative 0.33, etc. So the more negative prompts you have in there, the more it's going to dilute it, just like with the other ones. But we still haven't had people crop up yet, and we've got. It does look like it's cleared it out a bit. Um, those are maybe it's those are counters. Those aren't tables. Those are counters. Okay, let's get rid of the counters. Countertop minus one. We'll just keep going. I'm just kind of curious. I want to kind of keep going to see if people ever crop back up and is what I'm kind of experimenting with here. So if you notice now it's down to negative 0.25 for each one. So I wonder if this gets diminished enough if the people start cropping back in. Yep, 
and that's what happened. So that was kind of why I wanted to show you where negative prompts aren't working. Uh, it might be that you just have too many of them, and I, I would just kind of resort them to maybe two at the most for this, for the weights. That just might be the way that it has to be done. Or you can look in the prompt itself for what's creating that image. But that is how the negative prompts work, and let's just go ahead one more time. I'm going to show you how we can get rid of the people at least for you. And I do got that fixed seed in there, so it should render the exact same way every time. So you know the best way to like I've always I'm always used to just I had I use Disco Diffusion a lot you know if you notice I have a lot of guides on that and there are all the people are gone so that that does work effectively but you also want your main prompt you want to be able to fine tune it also maybe with your weights maybe just with what's in it let's also see if we can get rid of because I know one of the big problems too is all those artist signatures and watermarks so uh, one modifier that can show those a lot is this stock photo so I'm gonna put a I'm just gonna put a landscape and a stock photo we're gonna see if we can get a watermark here and let's go ahead and I'm just gonna do a small run here let's see if we can get one to come up here out of six so this is something, especially when you're doing animations, you can either use a negative prompt for your animation or take out problem modifiers. Like stock photo, a lot of times an artist, there's certain artists that will give you a lot of signatures, things like that. You can also throw in, um, see like right there, boom, right off the bat, we've got our watermark and signature there. Let's just go ahead and use this one. Okay, so let's go ahead and copy this seed. First, we're just going to render it, make sure we get it the exact same way. So, nope, that's the batch. There it is. Okay, let's just make sure that we get the same image here. And then we'll try a negative prompt here to get rid of it. Okay, and there it is, that Getty images there. That is from the stock photo. So that's something that I hardly ever use that as a modifier. I have seen some people use it, so that's just another reason why I was kind of putting that's a really bad modifier to use, but it's perfect for what we're doing now because we are testing our negative prompt. So let's first do, let's just do watermark first. And let's see if this gets rid of it, and then we'll try signature after this. So we've got our negative one for the watermark. And that just gave us a totally different image. So let's see. Let me. And maybe that's just how it dealt with it. Let's just see. Let's see if, or if it was for me splitting these up into the weights. So that did change it slightly. If you notice now, instead of both of these getting 100%, these are both split 50% a piece. That might have made a change on it. Let's see here. Yeah, I did. So it's it's a different image altogether than the original one I had. So let's go ahead and do this. I'm going to put that comma back in there. Because that, that colon with the weight does take the place of a comma. So let me see if I can go ahead and restructure this. Or we can just do it. I should have just done it from the beginning with weights. Just putting the weights on it there. Okay, so there we go. Now we're back to the original. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is let me see if this is going to be the same. Yeah, so that, is, that should be a 1 still. It should still give both of those a 1. Whoops, I forgot to run it. Yep, so no, it's not. So what it's doing here is it's giving landscape, stock photo, and watermark at negative one. So it's it's subtracting that original one there too as well. So let's see if we can fix this here like this. Let's try that. Okay, there we go. 
this should be the same now so now we have the watermark minus one and our landscape and stock photo of one so this should be there we go so it did not do that it did not take out the watermark it actually made that more prevalent so let's try signature now We could also try text. Uh, like I said, I haven't really experimented a whole lot with negative prompts. I've used them on some of the apps, but for the most part, I usually just try to get my prompt to render good with just the positive part of it. There we go. That got rid of it. So I think this is a great note to end on there. That completely got rid of that signature. And let me see how different it made the image, too. So, so a way it might have got rid of it is also maybe by just removing that particular picture that had that. So let's go ahead and test that. Let me look at that one more time. I just want to kind of compare this to what we had before. Let's look at it one more time there. We've got kind of a sunset and a blue sky. Okay, let's see here. So it might have changed the image pretty drastically. I can't remember actually now if that was similar. I was kind of focusing on the image there. I think it was similar at least. I'm just kind of curious if the AI removed it by just changing the image completely. So it does look a little different. The composition is still the same. We still got that sky, but there's kind of a post there. And let's go do that one more time. So this will work, though. This will get, but be prepared for some changes to your image as well, is what I would say with this. Because it might remove it in a way you're not expecting, but let's see how different this is. So we've got the post in the middle, kind of the backdrop there. But this will be really useful, especially for videos, animations, because then it's rendering a whole bunch of images. So you might sometimes get a bunch of signatures. Actually, that looks pretty much the same, so that's great. It did just take out that part. and kept a lot of the same other elements that's really cool that's really cool that worked great so i hope this tutorial helps you now to use those negative prompts again um, i just wanted to kind of show you the difference that might be and i'm really not sure how those negative prompts are incorporated into a lot of those apps like night cafe and things it might be kind of the same way i have used them on there but that's how you use them in this notebook and this notebook i think is just top of the heap it's it's great you can do everything in this so i'm going to be using this for a long time to come I'm actually working on some videos and music as well here soon that'll be up. And everyone have a great rest of your day. Uh, this should be, I'm going to try to post both these guides here at once. I've got a guide also on just for straight up beginners. So if you have friends that want to get into Colab here and using the Deform Notebook on here, I think this is the best way to use it, even the free version. And for me, you know, putting out 10 bucks a month or 50 bucks a month or whatever, you know, that's as much as I spend on my Netflix and Amazon. So that's really nothing because I spend a lot more time doing this. So I really love it. I'm going to stick with Colab for a while. I think it's the best the best version out there to do this stuff, animations, video. And I will have a lot more stuff soon. Everybody have a great rest of your day. And thank you for watching.